beloved in Christ, in this season of Advent, let it be our care and delight to prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem to see the babe lying in a manger. Let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by his holy child. And let us look forward to the yearly remembrance of his birth with hymns and songs of praise. But first, let us pray for the needs of his whole world, for peace and goodwill over all the earth, for the mission and unity of the church for which he died, and especially in this country and within this city. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us at this time remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children, and all those who know not the Lord Jesus or love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. Lastly, let us remember before God his pure and lowly mother and all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ, give us the joys of everlasting life. And to the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Adam and Eve rebel against God and are cast out of the Garden of Eden. Now the serpent was more subtle than any other wild creature that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God say you shall not eat of any tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband, and he ate. And the eyes of both were opened, and they knew they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I, I, I heard the sound of thee in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you 
that you were naked. Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me the fruit of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed of you among all cattle and above all wild animals, upon your belly you shall go and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. The word of the Lord. comforts his people and calls on them to prepare for redemption. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I say, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. 
Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. Jesus tells a parable of wise and foolish bridesmaids. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. But when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other maidens came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The word of the Lord.
the scribe Baruch urges the people to look east because salvation is at hand. Look toward the east, O Jerusalem, and see the joy that is coming to you from God. Behold, your sons are coming, whom you sent away. They are coming, gathered from the east and west, at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of God. Take off the garment of your sorrow and affliction, O Jerusalem, and put on forever the beauty of the glory from God. Put on the robe of righteousness from God. Put on your head the diadem of the glory of the everlasting. For God will show your splendor everywhere under heaven. For your name will be forever called by God, peace of righteousness and glory of godliness. Arise, O Jerusalem, Stand upon the height and look toward the east and see your children gathered from west and east at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that God has remembered them. For they went forth from you on foot, led away by their enemies. But God will bring them back to you, carried in glory as on a royal throne. For God has ordered that every high mountain and the everlasting hills be made low and the valleys filled up to make level ground so that Israel may walk safely in the glory of God. The woods and every fragrant tree have shaded Israel at God's command. For God will lead Israel with joy in the light of his glory, with the mercy and righteousness that come from him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and considered in her mind what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your kinswoman Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The word of the Lord.
St. Matthew foretells the birth of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child of the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. The word of the Lord. An angel announces to Zechariah that his wife Elizabeth will bear a son.
In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a, pri a priest named Zechariah of the division of Abijar. He had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinance of the Lord's blameless. But they had no child, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were advanced in years. Now, while he was serving as priest before God, when his division was on his duty, according to the custom of the priesthood, it fell to him by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. And there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And Zechariah was troubled when he saw him, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer is heard, and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great before the Lord, and he shall drink no wine nor strong drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. Zechariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is advanced in years. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel, who stand in the presence of God, and I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things come to pass, because you did not believe in my words, which will be fulfilled in their time. The people were waiting for Zechariah, and they wondered at his delay in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he had made signs to them and remained dumb. And when his time of service was ended, he went to his home. After these days, his wife Elizabeth conceived, and for five months she hid herself, saying, Thus the Lord has done to me in the days when he looked on me to take away my reproach among all people. The word of the Lord.
an angel. An angel appears to Joseph. But it isn't a dream. Still, he's almost certain he hears the angel say, do not be afraid, Joseph, to take Mary as your wife. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy from Isaiah, behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. They shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Yes, it is only a dream. But Joseph accepts what he experiences in his dream and recommits himself to the care of his betrothed. But still, it's likely he still hears another voice in his head reminding him, yes, but it was only a dream. And another revelation, this time to Zechariah, that his wife will conceive and bear a son. Zechariah openly doubts what the angel says, responding to the angel, well, how will I know this is so? How will I know that you're telling me the truth? It's all so incredible. Me and my wife, as best in years as we are. This, of course, provokes the angel, Gabriel, who strikes Zechariah dumb, unable to speak as his punishment. These two concluding lessons uh, for our lessons in carol service point us to the state in which you and I are all now living. We live with dreamlike intimations of God with us, combined with, if we're honest, an utter inability to understand it all, certainly an inability to speak it at all. I have, and so does Bob Daniels, the most embarrassing academic degree on the face of the earth. It's called a master of divinity as if divinity is something that could ever possibly be mastered by a human being. It's the most arrogant of titles we could bestow, and we might all wish that an angel would simply strike dumb all those people who confer such degrees, or people like me who work so hard to achieve them. But if we are like the wise bridesmaids in that third lesson this evening, who are prayerful and attentive, watching in their lives for the promised Emmanuel, whatever this might mean, this new life that we sense coming to birth within us and among us, then it likely will dawn on us beyond our rational faculty. From time to time, though, that indeed something extraordinary is afoot in our lives. Something ineffable, yet all important. Something that strikes us dumb, but keeps us alert. The great 20th century theologian Paul Tillich, I think, said it well. Here and there in the world, and now and then in ourselves, there is a new creation, utterly new, as if born again. We sense it 
And when we do, all we can do is hold our breath in wonder. But it is only here and there, and it is only now and then, not everywhere or all the time. And still this notion of Emmanuel, God with us. God even, he said, within us, will not let us go. And we commit ourselves to center our lives on this intimation. Especially when we find ourselves in love or when we find ourselves strangely moved, our hearts oddly warmed when we are caring for someone, let us say, in the hospital. Or when we are lending a hand to someone who's in need. Or when we are just wordlessly but lovingly holding, embracing someone who is feeling ashamed. Because we feel it stirring to life in us, we just want to reassure this one that they are loved. It's at times like these that we sense there is something, something divine about this moment. That's when the truth of Jesus' life and ministry dawns on us. As we remember in one of his most haunting of parables, when he said, a time is going to come when the king will say to you, I was hungry and you fed me. I was so ashamed and you cared for me. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. You visited me, you forgave me. And we will all say in response, Wait a minute, I don't remember that at all. When did I see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? Well, as you did it to each other, the king will say, you are actually doing it to me. And that's when the penny drops. That divine feeling, our hearts strangely warmed, when we were loving and caring for each other, that was Emmanuel, God with us. Not just that Jesus was Emmanuel, but that Christ, as he plainly said, that Christ was in you and in me. He is the vine, we are the branches, we are inseparable. The divine and the human. I mentioned this morning in my, one of my several sermons that to this day, the, the sisters of Mother Teresa's order in Calcutta, they go out into the streets of that noisy, overcrowded, smelly, thriving metropolis, and they bring back into their convent those whom they find homeless and dying in the streets. They reverently lay the person out onto a slab. And reverently and carefully, lovingly, they wash the person's body, soothing the person for his last days. And above the place where they wash the person, there is a very simple sign that says only, the body of Christ. Is this what St. Paul meant when he ultimately said in his letter to the Galatians, more and more when I look inside myself, I no longer see someone named Paul. Because it is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. Is this what Meister Eckhart meant when he said that, what good is it if Jesus is born in Bethlehem long, long ago, if Christ is not born in me today? Is this what St. Teresa of Avila meant when she said, 
Christ now has no body in the world but your body, no hands but your hands, no feet to go about the world blessing the world except yours. Christ has no body in the world but you, yours. Such a great mystery. Something new and beautiful, pressing to be born, not only long ago in Bethlehem, but also here and there in our own day, now and then in ourselves, especially we feel it when we find ourselves in love, giving love, caring for others, a new life stirring to birth within us, Emmanuel, God with us, the real presence of the divine coming into the world in you. On behalf of Dr. Forster and our choir and whole music program, welcome to Advent Lessons and Carols. If you're visiting with us, we're so glad to welcome you to Bethesda by the Sea. We want you to know that there's a reception following this even song. It's back behind us in our lovely garden, uh, thanks to our staff and others. Um, you're cordially invited to join us for some fellowship uh, following um, this service. I want you also to know that a week from this Wednesday, that's December the 15th at 7.30, Dr. Forster, our choir and the symphony will be playing um, and singing a Christmas concert. 7.30, December the 15th, you're cordially invited. The whole community is invited. We hope you'll join us. And in the midst of our Christmas concert, we'll also sing Christmas carols together as a congregation. If you're an Adventist, uh, just break your own rule <laughs> and come and enjoy our Christmas concert. <laughs> our choir is laughing with me. We also hope you'll join us all during Advent and Christmas season, looking to our website as when we might have, we have Christmas Eve and Christmas Day services. Uh, this year, also the day after Christmas Day is Sunday. Uh, so we'll have a lot of opportunities for worship and uh, praise here in Bethesda by the sea. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Kneeling, let us pray. O God, make us glad with the yearly expectation of thy coming. Grant that we who with joy receive thy only begotten Son as our Redeemer may without fear behold him when he shall come to be our judge, even thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, by whose providence our Savior Christ came among us in great humility, sanctify you with the light of his blessing, and set you free from all sin. Amen. Amen. May who, who, he whose second coming in power and great glory we await make you steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and constant in love. Amen. May you who rejoice in the first advent of our Redeemer at his second advent be rewarded with unending life. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. 